This is the year 2500. This is not the future we were promised. It is the future we appointed. The story of how we arrived here is not one of mystery, but of appointments kept. In the early 21st century, the world's most brilliant minds delivered their verdict. In thousands of pages of data, a body they called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change stated with high confidence that human activity had unequivocally caused the planet to warm. They laid out the consequences with chilling precision, warning that the path of current policies was a direct route to a very dangerous warming of 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of their century. This meant unprecedented fires, skies turned orange, storms shattering coastlines, droughts cracking the earth, floods swallowing cities. It was a warning on a planetary scale, a prophecy written in the language of science. Yet 2100 was just a date on a calendar, a distant horizon. The scientists urged policymakers to look well beyond the 2100 horizon to understand the full scope of the legacy being created. Because the children born in their time would only be in their 70s by 2100. The world they were building was not for them, but for their children and their children's children. They were making an appointment with the future. This is the story of that appointment, a journey to an alien Earth sculpted by our own hands to understand why you are watching this and what it means to inherit a world that was forewarned. The first appointment was kept as the planet crossed the threshold of 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius of warming, a line scientists had called a critical guardrail. Beyond it, some of the Earth's great systems were at risk of irreversible change. And so, they changed. The great ice sheets of Greenland and West Antarctica, stable for millennia, began a collapse that could no longer be stopped. It wasn't instantaneous, but it was relentless. A torrent of fresh water, trillions of tons of ancient ice poured into the oceans, a volume so immense, it altered the planet's chemistry and circulation. The rise in sea level was no longer measured in millimeters, but in meters. A full collapse of these two sheets alone was a commitment to over 11 meters of sea level rise, a process that would unfold over centuries, but whose first inexorable steps were taken then and there. The map of the world was being redrawn, not by war, but by water. Entire nations were erased. Their cultures and histories submerged beneath the waves in a silent final flood. Hundreds of millions were displaced, becoming the first great wave of climate refugees in a desperate, chaotic exodus from the rising tide. This colossal influx of cold, fresh water poisoned the engine of the North Atlantic. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, the current that acted as the planet's circulatory system, faltered. Already at its weakest point in over a thousand years, it now faced a complete shutdown, an event models predicted for the mid-21st century. The consequences were brutally paradoxical. Northern Europe, starved of the current's warmth, plunged into a localized ice age. Temperatures dropped by as much as 20 degrees Celsius in a single century. Ancient cities like London and Amsterdam became encased in ice, their iconic skylines transformed into silent, crystalline monuments to a forgotten climate. Meanwhile, the heat that was no longer being transported north was trapped. It scorched the southern hemisphere, creating super droughts and permanent, lethal heat waves across South America, Africa, and South Asia. Rainfall patterns, essential to life, were shattered for billions. The world was fractured into two climates, one of ice, one of fire. The 
chaos in the oceans delivered the final blow to the land. The AMOC shutdown catastrophically disrupted rainfall, starving the Amazon rainforest of the moisture it needed to survive. Already weakened by decades of deforestation, having lost 75% of its resilience since the early 2000s, the world's lungs crossed their tipping point. In less than a century, the greatest ecosystem on Earth died. It became a barren, arid wasteland. The symphony of life was replaced by the whisper of wind over sand. With the planet's two great cooling systems, the reflective ice of the poles and the carbon-absorbing rainforest now gone, a final planetary fever was unleashed. The permafrost of the great northern forests began to thaw, releasing a carbon bomb of methane and carbon dioxide, locked away for eons. But it wasn't just carbon that was emerging from the deep freeze. The thaw was unlocking, a biological archive. In Siberia, a heat wave thawed a decades-old reindeer carcass, releasing dormant anthrax spores that killed a child and thousands of animals. A grim preview of what was to come. Scientists revived viruses, frozen for nearly 50,000 years, microbes our modern immune systems, had never encountered. The thawing ground became a new frontier of contagion, a biological ghost from the planet's deep past. The path to an alien Earth, a planet fundamentally different from the one that birthed humanity, was now locked in. The appointment was kept. Here lies the greatest tragedy of our future history just as the planet's life support systems were failing, the pressure from humanity reached its absolute maximum. In the mid-2080s, the global population peaked at 10.3 billion people. This was the generation that inherited the whirlwind. The decline that followed was not a relief, but a symptom of a system already broken and it was wildly uneven. In the old developed world, populations had been collapsing for decades. By 2100, China was projected to lose more than half its people, falling to 633 million, a level not seen since the 1950s. Europe faced a similar fate, becoming a continent of ghosts, its aging populations unable to sustain themselves. But in Sub-Saharan Africa, the population was on track to nearly triple surging towards 3.4 billion people, and all of it in the most climate-vulnerable, resource-stressed part of the world. This great demographic divergence, a world of the old and dying, and the young and desperate, set the stage for the conflicts of the next era. Civilization runs on water, energy, and materials. By the 22nd century, all were scarce. The glaciers that fed Asia's great rivers were gone. Aquifers that took millennia to fill were pumped dry in just a few generations. Conflict over the last drops of water became the permanent state of existence in the world's arid zones. But another, more insidious collapse was underway. The complex global supply chains of the 21st century, a miracle of logistics, had shattered. The easily mined deposits of copper, zinc, and especially the rare earth elements needed for all advanced electronics were depleted or inaccessible. Without them, manufacturing new microchips, solar panels, or computers became impossible. Humanity entered a great simplification. The digital age became a memory, its data trapped on unreadable servers, its knowledge lost in the chaos. Humanity became a scavenger society, picking through the bones of its own golden age. 
This great simplification was compounded by a new age of plagues. As climate change shattered ecosystems, it forced wild animals from their traditional habitats into new territories, creating countless new interactions between species. This great migration brought animals and the viruses they carried into direct, constant contact with the desperate remnants of humanity, all competing for the same scarce water and food. The risk of a viral jump from animal to human became a daily reality. Localized outbreaks of unknown diseases swept through weakened populations with terrifying speed. Climate change had become the single greatest driver of new pandemics, a relentless, invisible threat in a world already on its knees. In this broken world, humanity fractured. A tiny elite, the descendants of those who had profited from the old world, retreated into fortified, self-sufficient arcologies. Powered by deep geothermal or the last functioning fusion reactors, these city-states preserved the knowledge and comfort of the past, sealed away from the hostile planet. They were islands of sterile order in an ocean of chaos. For the vast, declining majority on the surface, life was a brutal struggle for subsistence. They were the scavengers, the survivors, the inheritors of the wasteland. This was the ultimate outcome of a crisis, where vulnerable communities who have historically contributed the least were disproportionately affected. The divide was no longer between nations, but between those inside and those outside, between those who had a future and those who were simply surviving, a past that had been forced upon them. And so we arrive, the year 2500. The Earth is now alien to the species that remade it. In the Amazon, once the most biodiverse place on the planet, the land is a vast red desert. The river, now a sluggish brown ghost of its former self, drags through the dust-thick air. In North America's former heartland, the great breadbasket is gone, replaced by a humid, subtropical climate. Food still grows, but not by human hands. AI-driven drones tend to crops adapted for heat, oil palms, succulents, a silent, automated agriculture built on reduced human presence. Across the Indian subcontinent and tropical zones, heat and humidity have reached fatal levels. Life is lived indoors, inside climate-controlled green buildings, or sealed into personal protective suits that resemble space gear. To step outside is to risk death by hyperthermia. In these places, humanity has become the alien, a fragile visitor on its own homeworld. But the most profound change wasn't to the land. It was to humanity itself. Five centuries of survival in a world of extreme heat contaminated water and heightened radiation had left its mark. The species diverged. In the sealed arcologies, the Purers preserved the original human genome, but at a cost. They became utterly dependent on their technology. Pale ghosts living entirely indoors, unable to survive the world outside. Their society froze in stasis, obsessed with preserving the past. On the surface, a new human phenotype emerged, the ADAPTS. Through a brutal mix of natural selection and crude genetic modification, they developed traits for this new Earth. Extreme heat tolerance, resistance to waterborne pathogens, the ability to survive on the edge of starvation. They were still human, but reshaped by the world they had created. Their culture was forged in survival. Two distinct species, born from the same ancestor, now stood divided by biology and by technology. The last alienation was not from the planet. 
it was from ourselves. This future, this alien Earth, is not a prophecy. It's an echo of choices being made right now in our time. The tipping points that trigger the Great Cascade, they haven't been crossed. The population hasn't peaked. The resources aren't yet exhausted. Scientists of the 21st century spoke of positive tipping points, moments where rapid, self-propelling change, social and technological, could pull us back from the brink. They knew the window to act was rapidly closing, building intensity. The appointment for the year 2500 has not been finalized. The inheritance is still undecided. The question is not what their world will look like. The question is, what will we choose for them? <laughs>